Hello everyone, Steve Goodwin here with my Anchor Test video number 152. Today we're going to look at this 22 pound Anchorplex anchor recently introduced from Spain. Now to my mind, the big story with this anchor is it's uh, extremely simple disassembly and very, very convenient storage capabilities. Let me demonstrate. By removing a single shackle from the rear of the anchor, the whole thing just falls right apart. So here's the roll bar, and you'll see it's all just flat plate with the exception of these tabs. That's the only part that is not flat on the whole anchor. You can see it just comes right apart. There's the potential to store all these pieces underneath the mattress of your bunk and you might not even feel it. And then, of course, it could just be stacked and, again, placed in nooks and crannies of a boat. So it potentially could be a game changer in terms of a secondary or backup anchor, or perhaps if you have a race boat that you don't want to store an anchor on deck and need to slip it in someplace small, this really could be the answer. Now, the cost of this simplicity is perhaps less than ideal shapes and structures in terms of anchoring. And one thing that comes to mind is without folds in the fluke and um, dimensions other than, than this way on the roll bar, you could potentially have weaknesses and perhaps bend the anchor under higher loads. But we'll get more to that as we watch the footage of the anchor in the seafloor. So the anchor came out at 22 pounds on my scale, and when in the setting position, the tip came out at 7 pounds for a tip to total weight ratio in the low 30%. That puts it about middle of the pack for the other anchors. As far as chain attachment, they got the shape of the hole quite right in ter as far as I'm concerned. Um, three different size shackles that you might consider using for this size anchor fit nicely. Here's a 3 8 shackle, fits through no problem with no binding. A 5 16th shackle works just great, and so does a quarter inch shackle. You'll notice that there are two holes here. A second hole was provided above the primary in order to, in effect, increase the throat angle or increase the angle at which the fluke is seeing the bottom. Now, it's been my experience with fortress anchors which have adjustable fluke angles, a Danforth anchor which inadvertently had the wrong fluke angle that uh, these larger fluke angles uh, really can be a problem and make and defeat the anchor, make it not work at all in harder, firmer substrates. So for what I found around here in my waters is that there really isn't any need for a more open throat angle. Uh, again, it can defeat the anchor. So I did all these tests with the standard lower hole. Uh, perhaps in the future I will make a video just dedicated to this throat angle issue and maybe then I'll get into some tests with this other hole. But for now we're just going to use the standard slot there. Okay, let's get to the test and see how the anchor performed. Here are some of the behaviors of the anchor on my test bow roller setup. The anchor was able to self-launch 17 feet worth of this 5 16th chain, and that's a very, very high self-launching power. As far as stability of the anchor in the chalked position, it was excellent. Uh, it, it locks in and wedges in three points. Basically, the underside of the bow roller cheeks are on the top of the fluke, and then, of course, the shank is wedged into the roller. Very, very stable. The only nitpick is that it did require a high pulling force on the road to achieve that locked position. And lastly, uh, the closest you can mount your wildcat of your windlass would be 23 inches to the center line of the bow roller. And now we're on to the in-water portion of the test. We'll start with the cobblestone seabed. And like all other anchors in this size range, they have real trouble bearing. In fact, no anchor has ever been able to bury its shank here. This anchor was about in the middle of the pack. I was able to resist 165 pounds three times, kept the boat solid. And this was about the most fluke coverage I saw out of the entire, oh, about a 100-foot drag. Okay, now we've moved over to the cobble sand seabed. This substrate features a thin layer of golf ball sized stones on top of what is very pure and clean sand. I've never seen any binder or any material attached to the flukes on retrieval. Uh, the anchor was quite reliable at setting and remaining engaged, however its holding was quite low, right down with the same holding as a genuine Bruce of a similar size. 
Uh, note that the best anchor here, Amandis M2, was about five times better than this anchor. Uh, and the numbers were, uh, for, the, for the Anchor Plex, it was 215 pounds of reliable resistance. And then that best anchor, the M2, was up over 1,000 pounds. Okay, next is the clean sand seabed, and I'll note that perhaps about one foot below the top free-flowing layers of sand exists some binder. I, I do see evidence of that on some of the anchors on retrieval. In any event, the anchor was well buried and quite solid and say up to about 400 pounds of pull, but then at the target of 535 pounds, the anchor started moving and it did not stop. All throughout the 180 degrees of veer, the anchor was in motion, but it never released. It's very tenacious, never lost its grip on the seabed. I'll note that the very best anchors, such as the Viking 10 in this seabed, pretty much just stayed within the field of the camera view and just pivoted right on around through 180 degrees. Next seabed is the Sandy Mud, which is notorious for clogging certain anchors. And when that happens, they just pop out and are defeated. However, almost all anchors set nicely here initially, just like this Anchorplex has done. Uh, it's holding about 315 pounds of thrust at this point, pretty solid. But then just as I increase thrust up to 395 pounds, the anchor pops out abruptly, drags, and is very reluctant to reset. Next was a couple more straight line holding checks here in the sandy mud at 5 to 1 scope, but this time with increased chain. This is 80 feet of chain instead of 12, and it did increase the holding power by about 25%. Uh, it went from 315 pounds hold with the short chain to 395 with the longer chain. The increase in weight of the system was 75 pounds, so I'll ask you, what do you think would be better in terms of holding power? 75 pounds more chain or 75 pounds more anchor weight? Okay, next is the veer test here in the sandy mud. And for these 20 pound range anchors, I normally use 565 pounds during that 180 degree veer, but we just saw this anchor was unable to hold that. So I downgraded the thrust to 315 and executed the veer. And it looked like it was going to be perfect. However, just at the very end, the last few degrees of the veer, the anchor did have a full release. So although it, it did look good, uh, that between the downgraded thrust and this release and a failure to reset, uh, it will get a substantially lower rating than some of the better anchors here in this seabed. Next is some reset testing here in that sandy mud seabed. We're back down to just 12 feet of chain and we're still at five to one scope. Initial set was perfect as always and here is the first reset. Doesn't get much more violent than that. It was a complete backflip and the anchor rolled over basically while it was flying. As soon as it hit the seabed, it just nailed itself in, so that was perfect. Here's a second reset, and it's a repeat. It's uh, upside down there, and rolls, touches down, and bang, right into the seafloor. So that's perfect so far, but that is the end of perfection, because the other eight resets, although they basically achieved uh, a pretty decent tug, there was lots and lots of dragging, so the anchor had become fouled. But on the whole, that was a pretty good performance, especially for a roll bar anchor, as that type does have more of a tendency to become mud fouled than the non roll bar types. Next is a repeat of that 10 times reset test. This time it is with much shorter scope. It's only 3.5 to 1 and we're still using the very short chain. That initial set was perfect and held a very nice burst of power. The first reset was also very, very good. We see it was a full backflip. The anchor does rotate, and as soon as it hit the ground, it just stopped the boat. But that was the end of the good times. After that, it never really held much at all. It was sort of nibbling at the seafloor, but again, the other nine tries were a bust. Now, you might be wondering, why do such a ridic ridiculously short scope test, especially with such short chain? And the answer is... 
There are several other anchors that can pass this test perfectly. They'll reset every single time and hold many hundreds of pounds of thrust. So I keep this test in the repertoire as a testament to those anchors that can pass it. Okay, now we're on to the fifth and final seabed in which I will test for this video. This is the soft mud at Scow Bay, and unlike the other four seabeds that we have viewed, the anchor really shines in this substrate. In fact, it's as good as any non-pivoting fluke anchor that I have tested here. The anchor is burying itself completely. We see it at the top of the screen. The roll bar is just disappearing, and the anchor was able to resist 685 pounds of resistance repeatedly. We'll notice that the camera tethers do become captured. That's a common problem. And someone recently suggested that I switch out these 8th inch diameter parachute type cords for something more slender like Dyneema fishing line. And I need to do that. So look for perhaps a better camera arrangement in the future. Unfortunately, the anchor was not perfect here in its structural integrity. The roll bar did bend back. I'll let you decide whether or not you think an anchor needs to remain uh, completely whole in, say, hurricane force wind. But in any event, the roll bar was very easy to correct. I, just by pushing downward, I could get it right back into its original position. A little more. Last test for this video is another one here in the soft mud at Scow Bay. This is a 180 degree reset test with a fairly gentle two knot pass over for the boat speed. And then it's about a 300 pound burst that we'll look for on the reset. And uh, the initial set was great. Uh, the first reset is also just wonderful here. Couldn't tell if that was a backflip or if the anchor pivoted, but uh, no matter, the anchor uh, resets and just completely buried out of sight. So that was perfect. Here on the second reset, it appears there is a full backflip that happened entirely beneath the seafloor and then eventually the anchor pops out because well it's upside down um, and it has a real trouble. Uh, the anchor is completely uh, fouled with seabed. It's just got a big blob. I didn't see any indication of a stick or anything else. We'll just watch this as the anchor progresses. Uh, we'll see at some point that the anchor is on its side. Come to a stop and then restart, and it's pretty hopelessly fouled. I think if I went really, really fast, you could wash that material away, but at, uh, at kind of a dragging speed, it looks like it's pretty hopeless. And now we can see part of the fluke visible, and indeed the anchor is uh, at least 90 degrees, maybe more like 120 degrees uh, toward the upside-down side of things. So I did another reset, and the act of jerking the anchor around may have knocked some more mud off, and lo and behold, it did reset. In fact, all the rest of the resets were quite good. So I'm going to give it 4 out of 5 success rate here, which is very good. This is a challenging test, and many, many anchors uh, really fail miserably here. So once again, in the soft mud, the anchor plex is really as good or very close to as good as it gets in terms of non-pivoting fluke anchors. Anchors. So Anchorplex clearly did not build a top performing anchor. However, it is a perfectly serviceable anchor. In fact, it really closely matched the performance of a genuine Bruce. Now strength wise, there's clearly some deficiencies. We did bend the roll bar back in that soft mud. However, being made of stainless steel, there was no galvanizing to flake off during the bending and straightening out process. So that's a plus. Um, in terms of the shank strength, I'll mention that I did bend the shank of a 304 stainless steel Quickset 22 anchor. Um, the vertical height of both those shanks is similar, but I'll mention that the anchor plex is a bit wider or thicker material. So let's say that this shank, while not the weakest of the bunch, it's, well, let's just say it's somewhere in the middle of the pack. Now, anchor toes are another vulnerable area. These get lodged under large boulders or perhaps a mooring block. And then when you go to retrieve, 
you've got a long lever arm here and they will likely bend down in those situations. Um, many anchors have a thickened toe or perhaps folds either upward or downward in the sheet metal and that adds tremendously to the strength. Here we're just dealing with flat plate, no extra material. So I'm going to say that that toe is probably vulnerable to that kind of damage. Um, I'll leave it up to you whether you think it is important for an anchor to withstand those kinds of rare events, but I will give it a fairly low rating in terms of strength on my chart. Speaking of that chart, here is the latest 20 pound range anchor ranking chart. And although the anchor plex is, well, just a little below dead middle of the pack, look at its performance average. It only gets a 2.4. That's just slightly less than a Bruce at 2.5 and just a little better than a Delta at 2.3. So if it wasn't for its non-in-water parameters, the anchor, the anchorplex would be quite low on the chart. But as it is, again, we see it up near the middle and it's helped by the fact that it is stainless steel, so no problems with, with galvanizing and that kind of corrosion. So it gets a five there. Price was very favorable, gets a four, and that is undoubtedly a factor of its extremely simple construction. There's no welding, no casting, and just only the bends of those tabs of the roll bar. Uh, other than that, they just cut the metal out, have it plated, and ship it out. Other parameters that helped it was the bow roller, self-launching power, and stowed stability. Here's the latest graphical depiction of the anchor's holding capability, and we will find the anchor plex over to the far right there next to the Bruce. Really quite low numbers with the exception of the green bar, that is the soft mud. Holding per weight, again, all of these are normalized for the anchor's weight, and again, soft mud, it's right up at the top of the pack. Okay, that's all I got for this 22 pound anchor plex. I'll mention that they do have several other sizes, including a very small one at one kilogram. And that could be an excellent low cost alternative to the exceptionally performing Mantis dinghy anchor. Okay, speaking of anchors that are fairly expensive, I'll mention that the new Rockna roll bar anchor has been released. It's available at West Marine and it is called a Mark II. Now, I'd really like to test one because to my eye, they just might have a game changer here. It looks like they've pulled out all the stops. There's specialized shapes. Uh, the roll bar has a, a, a foil shape to it and the shank has also got that sharpened leading edge, not unlike a Vulcan. So again, really could be an excellent anchor and there's just exactly 700 reasons why I don't have one of their 20 pounders here. Yep, you guessed it, it's 700 bucks. So it's really, really an expensive anchor. And uh, as you know, I have some patrons and I get some money from YouTube, from you guys watching the ads at the beginning, but it is not enough to cover this. So I'm gonna ask for donations that go directly to the bar purchase of a Rockna Mark II anchor. So do it via PayPal if you can, and write a little note that says Mark II. And what the deal is, if I don't get enough money and don't end up buying one of these, I just won't cash your check or I won't accept the funds and you'll get it back. So you won't be spending your money on nothing. All right, that's it for now. Uh, as always, I hope you guys anchor safely. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. So long.